Welcome to Sprattronics Learning Lab. This week we're going to be talking about gears. Gears are wheels with teeth on them, little grooves, and that lets our gears lock together and they can efficiently translate force into motion. And so we're going to be going through a couple different gear setups and then how we can use that as we build robotics as well as other parts of the world around us. So join me as we jump into a variety of different gear setups, gear ratios, as well as the machines and builds that we can make using that information. Let's do this. So a couple quick things to know about gears. A few things that we want to know is the drive gear is the gear that is turned by an outside effort. For instance, your hand could be the outside effort. So I'm turning this crank to turn this gear. That makes this gear the drive gear. And then the other gear is called a driven gear or a follower. The drive gear provides the input force and the driven gear delivers the output force. Using a gear system can create change in speed, direction, and force. But there's always advantages and disadvantages. For example, you cannot have both more output force and an increase in speed at the same time. So let's take a look at some different models of these gear drives and we'll take a look at how they work. Gears are found in many machines where there's no need to control the speed of rotary movement and turning force. Common examples include power tools, cars, and even egg beaters. All right, first up, I have a one-to-one -one gear ratio. What that means is both of these gears are the exact same. If I turn this crank around one time, you'll see that the output is kind of down at an angle and the input is down at an angle as well. If I turn this one time, they end up right back where they started together. And so with this one-to-one -one gear ratio, the speeds of the drive gear and the driven gear are the same. They have the same number of teeth. The drive and driven gear are gonna turn in opposite directions. So here's how I built this one, just two beams and a couple axles going through the middle. And I'll put directions for all of these directly in the description. We're gonna make a quick change now, take this one off, and we're gonna put in a smaller gear We've traded out our bigger gear and put a much smaller gear on here, an eight tooth gear. And I'm gonna put a little indicator on there so that we can see the output. This model is a one to three gear ratio. The larger drive gear is gonna turn the smaller driven gear, resulting in increased speed, but reduced output force. You'll see that each time I crank this around, the other gear turns three times. One, two, three, which is gonna make it go much faster but not have as much force. We're gonna see that shortly whenever we take this little car and see if we can make it go fast or make it climb up a hill. And so again, this is a one to three gear ratio. One crank here on the drive gear gives us three turns on the output gear. This model has a three to one gear ratio. Our drive gear is small and our output gear, our driven gear, is much larger. It's gonna take three turns of that small gear to turn the output gear all the way around one full time. And so you'll see that the motion is a lot slower. However, this provides a high amount of torque or a high amount of force. And so this gear setup is gonna be great for having our little vehicle climb up a hill. Here's our little demonstration car. And here we have a one to three gear ratio, which is zoomy mode, but it gets stuck going up the ramp. So we're gonna switch it out to a three to one gear ratio. That's a low gear using that little eight tooth gear on top as our drive gear. So this three to one gear ratio is a lot slower, but it is absolutely capable of going up some pretty steep ramps in order to be successful. So, high gear, the zoom gear, low gear, the climb gear. We'll take a quick look underneath the car to see that we have an angular gear placement, and you'll see about that later on in this video. This model that we've created here is a one-to-one -one gear ratio. This small middle gear in the middle is called an idler gear. The idler gear does not affect the gear ratio, speed, or the output force of either drive or the driven gears. The drive and the driven gears are going to turn in the same direction and at the exact same speed. So you'll remember in our very first one we had two of the same gears and they moved in opposite directions. 
you can add idler gears in between to change the direction of your output gear. So as I turn these, they turn at the same speed and they turn in the same direction because of that idler gear. This model shows a compound gearing with a 9 to 1 gear ratio. Because of this, the turning speed is significantly reduced and the output force is greatly increased. The small drive gear is going to slowly turn the larger driven gear. The smaller gear on the same axle as the driven gear is now set in motion and is slowly turning the second large driven gear, making it turn even more slowly. So you'll see it's going to take us nine turns to make this turn all the way around. That's going to give us a lot of output force, so this gear setup is great for lifting heavy things or for driving uphill. So this is a compound gearing with a 9 to 1 gear ratio. This model shows a gearing setup for periodic movement. The driven gear is going to turn for a short while and then stop for a moment. The speed is significantly reduced as movement is only going to occur when the driven gear is meshed with one of the two drive gears. And so we're using this large gear really just to hold our drive gears in place. So you'll see that as they spin, they only come in contact for a short period of time. And when they come in contact, that's when they turn our driven gear. And so this could be useful if you only want something to happen every once in a while. And you'll see that it only turns whenever our little gears come in contact with it. So this is called periodic gear movement. We're changing our setup now. And instead of just those two beams in the middle, we now have three with two on the outside. And this is called an angle gearing. You'll see I've got a beveled gear here and a beveled gear here. And that lets it so that whenever I turn this crank, I can turn this output on this side at a 90 degree angle. So we can change the direction of the, our movement. An example of this in one of our builds is we have built a windmill. And when we turn this crank, it is going to turn 90 degrees and change the direction of the turn. And we're actually going to add another part to this right on top. You'll see I have a windmill that has another 90 degree turn here. So when these turn, my windmill blades turn, but I need a 90 degree at it. And then here I just have a long axle with a gear on both sides, a one to one gear ratio there. So this ultimately is a one to one gear ratio with lots of idler gears in the middle that change the direction. I need to get closer to show you how that looks. So here's our drive gear right here. I turn that, it turns lots of other gears. It turns this big black gear, which changes the direction to turn this cam. It also turns this gear up top, which turns another 90 degrees to go straight up. And then I have another 90 degree turn at the top. But these are all the same size gears, so ultimately my gear ratio is one to one. So one turn down here turns my windmill one time. This model shows a worm gear with a 24 to 1 gear ratio. It reduces speed significantly as it takes a complete turn of the worm gear to move the gear above by a single tooth. It changes the direction by 90 degrees. This output force is increased significantly. Worm gears can only be used as a drive gear. So we line up our gears and we start turning and you'll see that it's going to take about 24 turns to turn that driven gear on the other end. So coming all the way around as we turn. This model shows a rack and pinion gearing. Unlike the previous gears, a rack and pinion gearing can only be used for linear motion not rotary. That means it can go forward and backwards. When the handle's turned, the gear rack moves forward or backwards depending on the rotational direction of the small gear, which is called the pinion. And then this bar gear down here is called the rack. So I can send it forward, send it backwards. You could attach things to either side in order to make deliveries. You could also have this angle your wheels 
in order to move the front end of your car for steering.